Hello, I'm Frank Jackson. I'm a gastroenterologist. Today I want to talk about leaky gut and prebiotics. Wherever you go on the web, you run into people who talk about a leaky gut. Very often, what they say is not correct. Please let me tell you what this term means to us physicians. It is far different from what you may have been told. What I say is backed up by many facts and research from many academic centers across the country. First, you should know what the normal gut wall looks like at the microscopic level. It consists of matchstick-shaped cells lined up very tight to each other. These cells function as a unit, absorbing nutrients from the gut and keeping bad bacteria and toxins from breaching this tight wall. This is the normal and desired state of affairs. I mentioned bacteria. Yes, we all have an enormous number of bacteria in our lower gut. They are meant to provide us with many health benefits if they are of the right kind. Good bacteria, you might say. Yes, you can have bad bacteria in the lower gut, and that is where the leaky gut problem begins. When the mix is bad, the cells in the wall of the gut float apart, creating a space. Guess what goes through this space and into your bloodstream? Toxins that you might ingest in your food. Toxins that bad bacteria in the gut make even parts of or entire bacteria themselves. You heard that correct. You yourself can create your own leaky gut through the types of foods you eat, and in so doing, create a leaky gut. There are many such toxins known to us. One is called LPS, lipopolysaccharide. It is a nasty one, as it causes low-grade inflammation throughout the body, including the coronary arteries. The simple way to tighten up the colon wall is to gently move your diet to a plant-based one. Reduce the saturated fats and the total meats in the diet, and you gradually shift the bacterial load in the gut to a good one. The cells that line the lower bowel and colon tighten up, and a leaky gut is corrected. It is simple as that. I mentioned prebiotics at the beginning of my talk. Now, a prebiotic is not a probiotic. A probiotic is a live bacteria, as in yogurt or a pill you may buy. A prebiotic, on the other hand, is a specialized and very valuable plant fiber found in certain foods, such as asparagus, onions, wheat, bananas, and many others. Go to my educational site, jacksongi.com, for the full list and the description of prebiotics. Simply put, you need to have a high level of prebiotic fibers in the diet because it is these fibers that feed the good bacteria in the gut and drive out the bad ones. In a word, a low amount of prebiotics in your foods means bad colon bacteria and a leaky gut. A high amount of prebiotics leads to a healthy bowel wall and no leaky gut. Many of my patients over the years were using many different colon cleansing programs containing herbs, laxatives, gut liquid flushes, and such. None of these have any value. They often flush out the good bacteria with the bad ones. What does have value is to feed the good gut bacteria the food fibers they need to grow. Then you stand back and let your own normal physiology and chemistry take over. There is lots of solid dietary information on my home website, jacksongi.com. You also can assure yourself of getting enough of these valuable plant fibers by using my naturally sweet prebiotin supplement. So there it is. You have a leaky gut if your diet is high in saturated fat and meat. You modify and correct the problem with simple dietary changes and a supplement such as prebiotin, the best prebiotic formula available anywhere. I wish you a healthy digestive system from your good gut friend, Dr. Frank Jackson.